Today, I'm leaving Cold River Guest House and heading out towards the other side of Luang Prabang, Laos. We're going to go to another hotel, which I like to do. I like to show you a few different places. And we're also going to have a conversation about the cost of living here in Laos. Well, good morning. We are in Luang Prabang, Laos, and we're heading to a new hotel. I like to show you folks a, a couple of different locations, of course, not just the same hotel for the whole time that I'm in country. So you get kind of a chance to see what the different places look like. We're walking through Luang Prabang, the downtown area, which let me show you what the downtown area looks like, first of all. <laughs> Luang Prabang is a small town. It has a feeling like the outer islands in Hawaii, like Hilo maybe. One, maybe two story buildings, small hotels and restaurants, and just a really relaxed feel amongst the locals here. And uh, that's just kind of the sweet spot for me now when it comes to travel. That's kind of right where I like to be. I don't mind traveling to the big cities and seeing them, but this is actually right where I like to be. Now we're coming up on the next hotel that I'm gonna stay at. Villa Kangham is a wonderful guest house with a feel of old time Laos. Oh, there you go, right here. The mad dog of Villa Kangham, right here. They get two for one with this mad dog. Not only does he guard the property, but he also handles the landscaping, as you can see. So they get two for one with this mad dog. Look at these chairs here. These are like massive. So you said these. Are, this is local wood. At $14 a day, this room is giving me utilities paid for, Wi-Fi, bottles of water, coffee. I've got a refrigerator, television, lots of room to set my things down. A beautiful view outside, which is really nice. And the outdoors was lush and green. Plenty of room for me to put my things and a full remodeled and just perfect bathroom. Lots of room here. I enjoy getting out from my walks here in Luang Prabang. I walk every morning for a couple of hours and you get out and find things to eat and just relax and enjoy yourself. This is a very nice place to go if you just want to get away from the big cities on your vacation, you want to stay someplace that's more relaxed, you're going to find that here in Luang Prabang. And today I want to talk specifically about cost of living, about why I decided to go to Southeast Asia for my retirement and not stay in my home state back in the US, what the difference in cost of living is and also the lifestyle as well, which I find to be much more relaxing and much more positive and a lot less stress and chaos. But specifically talking about cost of living, let's start out with what it's costing me to live here housing. A lot of times I look at what I would have paid for one year back in my home state. Let's talk about that. It's now, you know, about the end of the year here as I've been traveling. And I look at what the cost of living is for me being in Southeast Asia as compared to being in my home state. Let me put up here so you can see what it would have cost me for housing for one year. That's rent for one year back in my home state. So you can see that. That's what it would have cost me. Now I'm averaging every month as I'm traveling through Southeast Asia, 
and I'm staying in different countries, I'm averaging this per month, okay? Now let's take a look at what that is over the course of one year. There you go. That's a course of one year housing cost traveling through Southeast Asia. Now you might say, well, look, you know, you're paying for flights here and there. And that's very true. So I think like going between one country and another, you can probably add, because some hops are very inexpensive. And then if I'm going a long distance, it's a little bit more pricey. You could probably add a little bit more. You can probably add something like $100 per month if you wanted to say uh, cost of flights for the entire year. So maybe about $1,200 for the entire year. If you were to add all of my flight packages together. Uh, one thing that I tend to do is I tend to buy flights as a group. So I'm going to go here, stay for a month. I'm flying here. Not only is that a good way to save money because you're buying this larger package of flights, but also when you get to immigration, they usually wanna see that you have a ticket flying out of that country. Not every country is like that, but it does happen. And if I have say four or five tickets over the course of five months that I purchased, immigration likes that. So just think about that. Look at this cute house right here. Oh, that's so nice. Look at this, just this cool two-story design with the little French architecture. I love the French and local influence in the architecture. It's so cool here. Let's talk about the second biggest cost of living, whether I'm back in the States or I'm here in Southeast Asia, and that's food. I am cutting my food bill in half by living in Southeast Asia. I'm gonna show you a couple of meals and that'll give you an idea of what I'm eating today, just a given day, and what it's costing me. Tangor is a fun little restaurant right here in Luang Prabang. The food is delicious, and it's going to be just a little price point higher than what I usually eat. I wanna show you the highest that I would pay in any given day. Thank you so much. Whew, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> As you can see, the prices in Laos are incredible. This is considered a high price point for me. I'm generally below $4. A $7 delicious meal like this is high. Remember, in Southeast Asia, the price of red meat is high. Chicken and pork is cheap, though. That gives you an idea of what it's costing me for food here. I'm finding meals for $2, $3, and $4 here in Laos. What about transportation? What is it costing me for transportation here in Laos? Well, first of all, let's talk about what it would cost me if I was back in the States. Let's take a look right here. Back in my home state, my vehicle would cost me about that right there. Go ahead and take a look. That's what it would cost me about if I had stayed back in the States. That's what it would have cost every month. That's for payments gas, insurance.
But here, if I actually need to get anywhere, all over you see these little tuk-tuks like this. And you can just rent one. I can go across town in a tuk-tuk for $4. If I actually need to go deep into the mountains and I need to spend the entire day with a tuk-tuk, that's gonna cost me about $20 American to have a driver for the full day going anywhere I wanna go by not having a car and instead using the tuk-tuks and walking here in Laos. I am removing the bulk of all my transportation costs. I think my transportation costs have gotten down to this and that's for this month because I've been renting a tuk-tuk and a driver to get out into the jungles to do a bunch of great videos. But you can imagine that if I removed that and I only walked, that cost would be gone. But I do believe that that cost was worth it because the, my driver took me to some great places. <laughs> I had a lot of fun with my driver. So again, let's take a look at what it would cost per month for a vehicle in my home state. And now let's take a look at what it would cost here using a tuk-tuk to get to all these different places right here. That's a big difference. That's a big savings. Every month that I've spent in Southeast Asia, I have probably put about $2,000 back into my pocket instead of spending it simply on cost of living. Oh, look, we got a mad dog right here. Take it easy now. Take it easy. Take it easy there. Just out for a walk. There's a mad dog right there. Mad dog. Got that mad dog on me right there. Mad dog's got the scent. He's got my scent and he's following me. That is two grand a month estimated that I'm not spending on cost of living. That really helps my retirement. The thing is, is that because I retired early, I don't have a lot of income. In fact, if I was to live back in the States, I would have to get another job. I would not be able to retire on what I'm making from my investments, but I can if I travel. And this is the option I'm trying to show people with this channel is that it's not just, I'm going to retire early. That's it. And then it's all going to work out. You have to plan where you're going to live and what you're going to do. So you keep your cost of living low. Deciding to retire early was not an easy decision. It was a decision that I had to plan for. And when I looked at how much money I was making every month for my investments, I said, it's not gonna happen in the US, okay? It's just not, we gotta go overseas. It meant selling my car, selling my motorcycle. I had a storage, emptied it, got rid of that. I reduced all my monthly bills and that made it possible that I was able to just focus on my travel and where I was gonna live and what I was gonna spend to survive overseas. Again, I don't make a lot of money. <laughs> in fact, it's very interesting. It's like, you know, I kind of look at my budget and I realize that back in the States, I would literally have to live in, a, in like a van in order to survive. I would not be able to pay rent on what I'm making. And for that reason, this has worked out really good for me. I mean, when I talk about nomad backpacking, I'm talking about that's how I'm living. That's the way I'm living right now. I have used this early retirement to exercise daily and get healthier. I have also used it to help me get healthier up here in my mind, to let go of the daily stress and drama of the West. Everything has to be in your face. Everything has to be chaos. In the West, it wasn't just the cost of living. It was the cost of my mental health care. <laughs> Think about that. That is a cost that has to be considered. What is the cost of me always being in stress? 
What is the cost of me always to be glued to the news on the television that everything is in chaos and there's always crime and violence happening? I believe that has a cost as well. I think it's not a monetary cost, but it's a cost that eats at you. And over time, that stress will build up and it will make you sick. It will make you sick physically and mentally, and that is a cost you have to consider. That was another reason why I left the West. It wasn't just monetary. It was many different forms of cost that I had to get rid of. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I hope that you've enjoyed our little walk around Luang Prabang Laos today and our talk about cost of living, about what it's costing me to retire early and live in Southeast Asia as compared to if I stayed in my home state. I hope these numbers resonate with you because I'm sure many of you are dealing with the similar situation that I was, which is that I had already been working 30 years. I was ready to retire, but could I afford it? Well, the reality is back home, I honestly probably could not have. But by leaving and traveling full time through Southeast Asia, I've been able to retire. And I just want to be an inspiration to others to do the same. That is the spirit of Bodhisattva, to give others inspiration and hopefully some positivity and a little bit of enlightenment about different subjects as we travel throughout Southeast Asia. I'd like you to come with, because we're not stopping. We're gonna be hitting different countries going forward. We're not even remotely done with Southeast Asia yet. And we still have a lot more of Laos to see as well. So I'd enjoy if you spend some time with me, like and subscribe the video. And until we talk again, aloha. Got it right here. Oh, he's making some desserts. Very nice. Oh, that looks good. That's ume. <laughs> that looks really good. Oh, man. So he puts like ice and cream and then like a flavor. And I think I'm going to try the coconut ice cream. But Oh, my, that looks good. That's fine. Yep, that's perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I've been flanked, flanked by the mad dog right here.